I just said that really weird. But I'm not gonna say it again. This video is gonna be short, isn't it? Hello, and don't worry, today is going to be a great day. Today we will be discussing The Ghost of Buxton Manor by Jonathan Ferrara. Next month we'll be discussing 100 Days of Sunlight by Abby Emmons. As always, you can find a link to both books in the description below, and this video will contain spoilers. Let me just start by saying I love the cover design of this book. You'll see it in the thumbnail. The cover was actually designed by the author's husband, Aaron, who, not so coincidentally, is also the name of a main character in the book. The Love Interest. I found this book by watching their YouTube channel, Husband and Husband, and I'll link that in the description below. I'm glad I did watch their videos before reading the book, because it made the story far more endearing. The story is written from the point of view of Rupert Buxton, an aspiring author who is also a ghost. He is trapped in his family's estate in England with virtually no memory of his past. In order to move on, he has to find out what his unfinished business is and take care of it. Which becomes easier when a new family moves into the house that was abandoned for about a hundred years. As you might have guessed it, this family has a son named Aaron and they fall in love. This story deals a lot with the idea of soulmates. It's pretty quickly established that Aaron, or in his previous life, Michael, is soulmates with Rupert. After Aaron's death, they both reincarnate in the epilogue and get to live out that life that they were originally supposed to live out, originally as Rupert and Michael, but now as Jonathan and Michael. So Rupert and Michael are based off of real people. Michael is actually the inspiration for the character of the same name in Peter Pan. Just like in the book, Michael and Rupert in real life were rumored to be involved romantically together. Then both characters' first reincarnated name is Jonathan and Aaron. Jonathan, the author of the book, Aaron, his husband, who did the cover design and is an artist. I think you can see where I'm going. He wrote himself into the book. Not just into the book, but as soulmates. And I love it. I usually roll my eyes when an author kind of writes themselves in as the main character, but in this case, I just found it really endearing and romantic. I'm impressed with the historical element of the book as well. It was both a ghost story and a romance, but it was also a mystery and a historical fiction. It's very incredible how these two historical figures managed to mesh so well into their lives that the reincarnation felt even more believable for it as opposed to a stretch. I think it also added to the soulmate element of the story as well. I also like the writing style and word choice. It likely wasn't perfectly accurate to the time period where Rupert originally lived, but it was close enough to keep me interested in the story and not take me out of it. And it really helped make it believable in that I felt like it was really Rupert who was writing it, as opposed to, you know, just the author writing it. I actually really enjoyed the epilogue. It threw me at first because I had no idea what had happened. It just said 68 years later and just I was taken aback like wait what? What's going on? But then once I started realizing what was going on it, it kind of was a perfect ending to the book. It gave me that happy ending I was really looking for for the two characters because at the end of the normal part of the book, before the epilogue, they separate. And that's sad and I cried, but in the epilogue they're brought back together, which I love. It ended up answering all my questions of what had happened after, as well as tied the beginning back in 
because in the beginning it stated that Rupert was using a journal. And I really liked how they kind of tied that in back in the end as, oh, this was published and written by Rupert. And I thought that was a really interesting detail and really brought the book full circle. I just also like how they tied in other characters that know, like Bloody Mary, how she kind of helped steer them back together, and like little Henry who grew up and is the old man at the bookstore when they meet again, and it's just really nice that he got to see them in their next life come together again after helping them when they were younger in their previous lives. <laughs> but can we please take a moment to talk about little Henry? He's dead. Yeah, we know that, buddy. And you're dead, too. Okay, buddy. I mean, I am, but how did you know? Well, thanks for the help. I'll see you again in 60-so years as a new person who has no idea who you are. I love him. He's my new favorite character. I'm weird like that. Who is your favorite character? What did you think of the book? Do you agree with my opinions? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I think that's gonna be it for today. For now, a smiley farewell. And always remember, nothing is ever only one thing. The story is through the POV. The story is pointed. <laughs> the story. The story.